everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. So we've been asked to to uh, run through the webinar again for MyBot GP for normal pathology filing, um, which we're going to do today. Um, we, as you as as you know or will know or may know, we have a number of products that are going to be coming live in the next six months or so, um, and those products include. Obviously, we already have normal pathology filing, uh, uh, Docman, uh, workflow, uh, attaching docs in uh, TPP, patient registrations for EMIS and TPP. We are on the NHS uh, website for that and also have access to a tool which um, enables you to potentially uh, not need to use a virtual smart card, uh, which is a, another conversation for another day, uh, and repeat prescriptions. So essentially, um, who, who, who we are, I'll run through who we are, um, what the MyBot GP range is, um, how it's installed, an overview of the logic that's used, um, and a configuration demo, and then we can have some, some questions and answers at the end. So who, who are Jif Jaff? Essentially, we are a, a company that build products um, predominantly for primary care, and those um, we are currently on the Health Innovation Network Launchpad program. Um, which is a, a NHS and government funded program to help launch innovative companies in technology. Um, and we um, and, our, and, and, and our specialist area is around using automation uh, as part of a product uh, in order to help you either free time uh, or lower cost or enforce, enforce standardization um, and, and essentially make your life a lot easier. Um, the MyBot GP range, and I'll, I'll share my screen very quickly. Teams is being a bit grumpy today, so hopefully um, it won't be now. Okay, that's a good start. So the MyBot GP range, I'll open up this presentation. So I'm going to run through this presentation deck that some of you um, may have had before. Um, and then I will show you a couple of demos of the tooling um, working. So you can see what that looks like as well. So MyBot GP essentially um, is a tool which can be downloaded in five minutes to your computer. Uh, that can be downloaded to someone's computer that they're using at the moment, uh, or it can be downloaded to um, a, a, a spare computer or a virtual machine. It doesn't really matter. The, long, the, the most important part is it's a five minute download, um, which comes with a selection of um, a selection which is which and I'll show you a copy of what that looks like as well, which comes fully loaded um, with um, 50, 100, 125 different um, blood test ranges, uh, potentials for additional checks in the patient record, uh, keyword checks um, predefined, which are signed off by you, um, which can then be plugged into EMIS or system one. Um, and will essentially review those uh, blood tests following the logic that, you des that, that, that you've um, decided to use, essentially a replication of your decision tree to, to filter from a normal to an abnormal pathology test. This is the launch pad plan. I'll go into a, a bit of a bit of information around the logic that, that we that has been uh, that you have the ability to use, which has been replicated um, from our, our steering groups in, in a moment. Sorry, I've got people still joining. Hang on a sec. So as I said before, um, with their clinically driven automations, we're in cohort six of the prestigious Digital Health London Launchpad program, which is delivered through the Health Innovation Network. Uh, we have a very strong record uh, in working in primary care, both at practice PCN Federation and ICB stroke ICS level. Uh, we're very experienced in nuances at working from practice level right the way through to at scale. And we're experts at, at working with EMIS, uh, TPP, Accurix, Patches, Vision, um, and all of the different Ardens and all of the different systems that you use. Uh, what's really important here for this product, and it's something you should take note of if you are starting to look at this type of tooling, um, is MyBot GP for normal pathology pathology filing has DCB0129. Uh, that is a, a certification um, which is not mandatory, but it's recommended, which is why, we've, why we have it, which is based on clinical risk. Uh, and we have a registered CSO, a clinical safety officer that we meet with every quarter to audit the logs that MyBot GP produces to, to ensure that it's working safely. Um, we also have the, the, the necessary prerequisites from a DPIA and DTAC 
perspective so that the kit once signed off can be um, you know can be uh, used what's the problem well currently at the moment in the uk um, you process 630 million blood tests a year that's 300,000 tests a day uh, and that's an annual of 50 million reports to gps uh, a large percentage of those are normal and when we say normal we're not saying they just don't have a tick next to them normal when it comes to the world of my bot gp is there is some some rules that can be used um, where you can further explore blood test results to decide whether they're normal or abnormal and i'll cover off what those rules are in a moment um, and according to current stats up to 70 percent of those can be reviewed by by my bot GP, which if you ignore all of the figures here, works out to up to 32 days a year uh, are spent reviewing blood tests, which if you can apply some logic to them, could be classed as normal. So, and I'm gonna talk about this quite a lot, fast install. Um, in previous years, and there are in, in previous years, and there are other people talking about automation, um, they, they lead to quite comprehensive uh, long installs it can take several months to copy logic um, to bespoke it and to get automation tools up and running um, my bot gp range does not sit in that bucket this is a five minute download so i can sit here with my computer and i can press go and email one practice or two practices or a whole pcn or a federation or, or a region uh, you will all receive an email that email you will click and download and my bot gp will be downloaded and and pretty much good to go within five minutes it's a five minute download that's massive um, because it's quicker to install it takes less time of your time um, and it's easily updatable the other thing that we can do with my bot gp is that if systems change we can press a button and update everyone's my bot gp at the same time so uh so so it's it's, it's more robust um it's been built because um essentially we essentially there's lots of different ways that different practices and different doctors and, and clinicians and partners uh, tend to file the same blood tests. Um, and that's because of different experience, uh, different pathology reports um, and different logic that they want to use and, and, and various other nuances. So what we've done is we've taken a five, six logic tree, six uh, foundational pieces of logic, um, which I'll cover off now and given you the ability through very simple drop down menus to decide how many pieces of how many tests you want to review a pathology report with um, to make a decision whether it's normal or abnormal. Uh, my bot GP to, to make it clear clear is a five minute download that plugs into it to emis or, or or system one or tpp whichever name you want to attach to it uh, and it can physically read every single pathology test every line of the pathology test it can also go into the patient record and it can read the patient record so it is capable of picking up a test result looking at the looking at the figure then going back into the patient record looking up that figure uh, and making um, uh, uh, percentage and, and uh, making decisions around whether to filter as normal or abnormal based on percentage changes that you drive this tool will read everything so quick to install uh, what's super important is it accommodates differences in approach by clinicians as I touched on before, you like to do things. You all like to do the same things in a slightly different way. It can accommodate differing laboratory report nuances, which is also a challenge um, because labs change the way that they produce their reports. That's not a problem for my bot GP. It can learn, and it securely reads everything. Can can do ability to do additional checks in the patient record, um, and also you can log in and 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 change the remits uh, of ranges or additional checks that you want to do at any time by yourself. Uh, my bot GP is also capable of sending text messages to patients through Accurix or Patches or, or whichever system you're using if you want to. You don't have to, um, or you could ask it to only send text messages for, for particular blood tests and, and not for others. Um, we leave that up to you. All you need to do is to tick a box and it will send a text message. And if you don't tick the box, it won't send the text message. And the way it does that, if you use Accurix as an example, will be the same way that a person does. It simply opens up Accurix and sends a pre-formatted template text message. We built MyBot GP so it can be used at practice, PCN, Federation and ICS level excuse me it's highly scalable going back to the analogy that i gave before we can press go on an email now and a whole pcn can have uh, my bot gp um, what's important is each practice would get its own copy so if you've got different um, and even at practice level 
different clinicians at practice level can have their own copy. So you don't need to standardize, you don't need to come to an agreement across the PCN around what tests you're going to use, uh, around what ranges you want to use. If, for example, your PCN um, is overlapped by two different labs and the ranges are different, you don't need to try and work out how to come to a happy medium. You all get your own copy, five minute download pre-configured. Here's the logic that's used. Now, some of the examples I give here will be slightly out of context, but, but it's to get the principles over and, and we'll open up for, for Q&A at the end. Um, so every single blood test that comes in, um, MyBot GP will read the whole pathology report and, and based on, on what you want for each test, uh, will use the following pieces of logic or not. Minimum maximum ranges, obviously. Keyword checks or absence of keyword checks on the pathology report or in the patient history. Going back into the patient record. Uh, gender, going back to previous tests and age. So what I'm saying there is that if you only wanted to file a percent, uh, some blood tests based on there being no exclamation mark, that's possible. If if another practice wanted to look at the same blood tests and make a decision whether they're filed as normal, uh, if there are no um, exclamation marks and ranges and checking in the patient history, it's able to do that as well. You could configure the logic. And what we've seen from the, from the practices that we're working with now is they're starting to apply more rules to filing uh, a, a percentage of normal blood tests because MyBot GP will do it in the background and time isn't an issue anymore because um, it will just it's not using up any clinical time it will simply apply all of the rules that you want it to do um, and then file as normal uh, or leave as abnormal uh, there's a full dashboard uh, that shows everything that my bot gp has looked at so at any point you can go back into the audit trail just to to, to validate that, that it's been applying the correct logic uh, it can be scheduled it can send text messages uh, and um, and it can it can uh, uh, deal with pop-ups now I'm going to show you a demo in a minute, um, so this we'll, we'll go over this again. But this is what it looks like at, at, at practice level. So as I said before, what we do um, is we have a collection of I think it's about 70 or 80, uh, 50. I'm being corrected, 55 blood tests at the moment um, that our steering group of, of uh, clinicians and practices of, are using, with the examples of what logic they've used from my bot GP to filter normal to abnormal. Uh, we share that with you in advance of installing MyBot GP. Um, you then go through those those blood uh, blood uh, test examples, and I can I can show, I can bring this up and show you it to look at if you in, in, later on if that's something that people want to see. Um, and then you confirm the ranges, additional checks, uh, keyword checks, absence of keyword checks, percentage changes. Um, that, that you want your MyBot GP to follow. And you send that back to us. Um, we email you a link. Um, and then essentially it's a five minute download. We upload the uh, the checks and additional tests that you want put in the MyBot GP is live. But in principle, what we're saying is if you take something like liver function test, if you would like to file for a normal report, you click file for a normal report. If you don't, you don't tick that button. If you want to send a text message, you click that button and it will send a text message for a normal. If you don't, it won't. Here, because it's able to read the whole of the pathology report and, the, and go into the patient record uh, and read the patient record, you can say for a liver function test, do you need to do a keyword check? Do you need to see if there's a keyword present? Do you need to see if there's a keyword absent? Do you need to see if there's a keyword in the problem page? Or do you need to not worry about a keyword? And if you do need to look for a keyword, you can physically write in what that keyword is. And I'll show you an example of HbA1c looking for the word diabetes later, which, which you write in. That's really important um, because the way the lab reports are put together, they change all the time. And that's one of the pieces of logic. Again, here are the different ranges. So you've got these are sample ranges, serum albumin, albumin uh, 35 to 50. Um, if you decide that that range isn't correct, you can simply log in and change it and save it and it will be done. Uh, previous iterations of automation uh, to make changes like this, you would have had to have gone back to the supplier where they would have had to recode it, change, create longer term paperwork, and it could have taken several weeks to make the change. Now with MyBot GP, um, this is sort of a, a, the, uh, reached quite a, a milestone in the world of automation. This is a product that you control at practice level and you, and you can change as much as you like. So if you wanted to change these ranges every single day, you can. You don't need to ask anyone. Obviously, 
the right person needs to have responsibility for it and make the changes. But um, if you wanted to go back into the patient record, you all you do is click that box and click yes, and then it will look at the last test or, or tests, uh, and then you manually write in the percentage change that you want it to do a calculation for to then filter on normal or abnormal. If there are additional blood tests, you can physically write them in here and save them and they'll be added to this list. And then obviously you can file with or without comments. Now, feedback we had from our steering steering groups um, at the moment, and it's what we're doing at the moment. This may change in the future, um, but we are being asked to leave copies of the blood tests in the uh, in, in the folder for people to review. So it will file and send text messages. But we've been given feedback that lots of clinicians like to um, like to see patient names as reminders almost to, to go off and do other checks. So there's there's no need to panic. It's not going to read everything and empty the box. And then you won't know what's happening in the background. What it will do is read everything that's in there, pro, uh, follow all of the rules that you've been that you've asked it to follow, and provide a full audit trail. Um, but it will leave the, the the copies in there for you to archive, so you can cast your eye over the test results to make sure you're comfortable with them, or use them as reminders. And uh, and obviously there's a very comprehensive reporting issue uh, reporting log on the back end here as well, which will which will go through more in in um, in, in, in the demo. Here's a bit of a description, essentially what I've run what I've what I've just run through uh, uh, very quickly on the description now around the filing rules, and just some examples around here which you can all see. You know, check the blood test value is within range. Check blood test value is normal. Check blood test values within range and look for a keyword. Check blood test values within range and keyword not present. Check a keyword not present within the problem page and navigate to patient history. Apply separate ranges for male and female. Uh, validate patient age over 18 in keyword check. Vitamin D check against two times minimum ranges. I vitamin D logic for insufficiency. And so on and so forth. As you see, you can cut this logic up as much as you like um, to replicate how you would um, you would make decisions around filing normal against abnormal. The way to think about MyBot GP is it's a helper. It's a helper that sits on your desk and you've told it what you want to do, what it's allowed to do, what it's allowed to look at, and what rules it can use to support you with this task. Um, again, this tool is for normal pathology filing. We've drawn a line under that. This is a normal pathology filing tool. Uh, we are working on an abnormal MyBot GP pathology filing tool that should be available later on in the year. But this is for normal pathology filing. But even by the calculations that we've that we've been given by uh, that we've um, found on found through um, through the NHS and, and BMA, that accounts for up to 32 days a year of clinical time, which is which is uh, astounding. Um, just to go back to what we were saying before, we have other products which are coming live soon. We will have a MyBot GP for patient registrations. Uh, we will have uh, repeat prescriptions, Docman, uh, workflow, and attaching docs for, for TPP. And repeat, uh, I think I said repeat prescriptions. They should all be live in the next couple of months. What I'm going to do now, very quickly, um, is I'm going to show you a quick demo. It's the same demo as we did last time. Um, it's quite quite a good one, and I think it's it's, it's really important to say that that MyBot GP is a is an evolution of automation in in the respect that this is not purely an automation tool. This is a a purpose built tool that file that that can follow logic that replicates your approach to reviewing uh, a selection of blood tests to decide on whether they're, they're normal or abnormal. All the automation part is, is where we're pushing it into the patient record and sending a text message. Um, this is a, a, a big jump forwards in terms of what's available for primary care. Previous iterations of this product were all based on, can we can we copy, can we get a robot? Where does the robot live? How, how much does it cost? How, who shares it? What happens if we want to change it? All those problems are gone. This is un completely under your control. This is a five minute download to your desktop. You set the rules, you configure it, uh, uh, you control it. If there's a big system change, we can do a quick patch update um, to keep everything live again. So if you if you think of this scenario, you've downloaded it. It's now living at, at your at your uh, site on a computer. 
and this is what the front page looks like for full blood count. So this could be pre-configured with this logic, with these ranges and additional checks or no additional checks, if that's what, what you wanted. And again, this is just for demo purposes. But let's say, for example, you wanted to add in additional pathology test categories uh, for haemoglobin estimations for uh, males and females. So as you can see, one of my colleagues is physically just writing that into the bottom over here. And then what they're gonna do is press add which we'll see in a minute. And this is what I mean by fully under your control. Now you've seen that hemoglobin estimation for males has been added to that list. So now my bot GP will look for that when it's reading a pathology report. Now we're doing for female. That's also been added. Now you're going to add in the ranges. So basically you're telling it to do, MyBot GP will do what you tell it to do. And we've seen lots of different ways that, that, that different practices have been configuring the logic to get to the same endpoint. Let me just pause that for a moment. Prostate is an interesting one. We have some test sites who, some sites we're working with who, um, who, who like to um, put a standard rule for every single prostate test that, that, that comes in, even if it's normal, always look in the patient history to see if there's been a previous test result. If there, if there isn't and it's in range, they're happy. Uh, or, or even if it's in range and they go back into the patient record and they find a previous test, and if there's been an increase of over 20%, they want to see that result. And that's then classed as abnormal. And then we've got other practices who don't like that logic and they want to set up separate ranges based on age. Well, you, you can do either of those um, with MyBot GP. You're not forced to, to use a logic that, that you're not comfortable with. As I said before, you can look for keywords, you can look for ranges, you can do additional checks in the patient record, uh, you can look for keywords absent, present, in conjunction with uh, age and gender. So if we come back to this now, for full blood count, you've got male and female. Here you're saying look in the patient record for a previous result, for this example, as we're saying three days, or three tests, and look for a percentage change of up to 10% increase or decrease. And if you see that percentage change, that, that then becomes something that gets flagged as, as abnormal. Uh, HbA1c, as you can see what we're doing here, you're simply telling MyBot GP as one of the rules, not the only rule, keyword absent in the problem page, what's the keyword absent? Diabetes, um, and then if you see that you're comfortable, send the patient a text message. So click the Accurix button to send a text message and it, and it will do that. And just running through a few other samples of, of logic here. I can't see the chat, so if anyone's got any questions and, and they pop it in the chat, I'll ask one of my colleagues to, to let me know and we can come back to the questions at the end. So here for liver function test, we're entering a, a new pathology test for, for that category. One of the other things that, that, that we've added to this, which is feedback we got from our steering groups, is that sometimes you get tests which are flagged as abnormal from the labs, but you believe they're normal. Um, so if you wanted to, there's the ability to overrule that to, to mark them as normal um, within MyPot GP if that's something that you want to do as well. So they're your ranges. And here we're sending a text message as well. Okay, so this is nearly done and I'll pop into the next, the next demo now where you can actually see it. Here it's being scheduled. So you can schedule it to run essentially different times of the day uh, or the night, three or four times a day, once a day. Um, it, it's completely up to you. So coming back to what is automation, um, this is a, a pathology tool, a, a normal, patholo a very uh, uh, bespoke tool which is built to file, um, to identify and, and action normal pathology tests. Um, that happens to use some automation. The automation piece is kicking in now. And what that autom as you can see in the top right hand corner, and this is with one of our clients, so it's been anonymized, but the, the, the top right hand corner, what you're seeing is the automation piece now logging into EMIS, 
using the rules that were defined um, as we as we did the short demo before to read every single lab report look for the bloods it's allowed to make decisions based upon and when it finds those bloods apply those rules to then either leave or filter as normal um, or or to be left to re be reviewed as abnormal and if you want send a text message this is the automation piece that's built into it now this is automation that we've built which is part of my bot gp um, nothing from a data sharing perspective nothing leaves your site everything still lives at practice level there's no there's no weird and wonderful um, robots logging in and out all over the place where data could escape or it's just, it's all built so it lives completely inside your bubble it's, this is like a, a five minute download it's like downloading um, Netflix or, or Spotify is the same sort of thing that lives on your lives on your computer. So the automation piece now is is going through the results. Um, flashing through the screen, obviously this is an EMIS demo. Looking for the pathology results um, and then and then applying that logic. We're also offering um, if it's something that you want to do, contact us after the webinar. Uh, there's there's the ability to take this at no charge for a six week pilot or six week trial, whichever way you want to, to 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 call it. There's also the option for that. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to use the tool for six weeks, and and then if you don't cancel, it will move to a, to a contract with us, which hopefully you won't. And all you'll need for that is is essentially to sign an agreement. We'll need an EMIS account to, to log into and, and we'll do the rest. We'll download it. We'll send you the spreadsheet with the blood templates. You confirm what what logic, what what ranges, additional checks you want. We'll upload it, connect it up and and, and off it goes. This is just going to run for another minute or two. OK, so we just forward this on to here. We start to come near the end. What you're going to see now is it's going to finish. And then what's really important is there's a there's an audit log at the back which is going to show up in a moment all anonymized uh, and it shows every single test every patient that it's looked at anonymized uh, and confirms what logic was used to make a determination based on their blood test that's really really important data from an audit perspective stuff that you won't have had before for the first time you'll have logic and a, and a fixed audit trail applied to every single blood test that passes through your practice at the flick of a switch uh, and also, we think further down the line, once you have regions using MyBot GP, you'll be able to start to evaluate sort of um, patterns and themes at a regional level. So if you look at the bottom here, so you've got EMIS ID, category, status, and notes. It's got some that it's skipped, like cytology laboratory report at the moment is out of scope. That may be coming in uh, as something we'll add in the future. And you've got the, the ones that it's looked at, full blood count and so on. So coming back to coming back to you know what I was talking about at the beginning of the call what what is my bot GP my bot is really important to put this into perspective this is an evolution of uh, of automation my bot GP um, they are automated tools they are bespoke tools that have very specific functions that that happen to use some automation and this tool is for filing normal blood tests. Five minutes to download by email and you configure it yourself and you can change it. You can change it at will. Um, what we saw um, is, is working at, at, at practice or PCN level. Um, and again, to, not to say stuff that you don't know, you all do things in a different way. So trying to make you do things in the same way to save money or time or cost um, doesn't help you. 
So what MyBot GP does is it enables you to download a tool that you're in control of uh, and you can make decisions around when you know when you want to. Um, it also enables you to change on a regular basis if you want to. Um, and we've already had with sites that, that that we're working with at the moment that they've that, that you know they've had notifications from the labs that the formats of the reports are changing uh, or the ranges are changing um, and that's not a problem doesn't knock out this tool, you can simply log in and adjust it so it can take that into consideration. So that's this bit of it. Um, and I'm looking just looking at the questions here now. Um, so I'm I'm on this call, obviously, Sanjay's a tech runs our tech teams here as well. Uh, so between us, we'll get through these these uh, questions. Um, so first question, TPP has launched auto review planning rollout. Do we know how my bot GP is different to auto review? Um, so yeah, I mean, this isn't just reviewing stuff that doesn't have an exclamation mark. My bot GP has five or has six rules that can be cut and pasted and configured and uh, in, in any particular way on every single blood test. There's no limit to it. It could then push it through. Uh, and send a text message. It's got it's it's in, it's entirely different. Uh, minimum, maximum ranges, keyword checks, additional checks in the patient history, age, gender, reading the problem page. So yes, it's entirely different, and it would sit on top of TPP, um, and it and it may well use some of TPP's functionality if it needed to, um, but it's uh, it, it's a it's a bespoke tool which is which is purely built to do that. Uh, it does code. Uh, at the moment, we've got Maurice's question here. Is it just for blood tests? This uh, webinar today is for normal pathology filing. Uh, we have MyBot GPs uh, going to be launched over the next uh, the next couple of months and later on in the year, uh, which will have uh, document workflow, repeat prescriptions, uh, and patient registrations as well. Uh, yes, we can share some slides after. And any more questions? So we work on a subscription model um, and it's a yearly subscription. Uh, the charge is 30 pence per, per patient for a patient list size. So if you have 10,000 patients, it's 3,000 uh, pounds. And then there's a 499 cost for the actual product itself, the MyBot GP. Uh, with regards to release dates, Sanj is on, on the call here, so we can put, put him put him in the spotlight around when the next tranche of stuff is coming through. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 let him, him, I'll let him, him answer, answer that. that. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, I would say in the next sort of uh, four to six weeks, we've got um, uh, prescriptions coming through. We've got document. We've got also the ability um, to 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 workflow documents without document. So that again is doing it directly with an emis. Um, so I would say roughly around four to six weeks, there are another three or four four products coming live. Um, so yeah, and and this is uh, getting fully functional for emis, and system one is currently going live. I think next week. So again, that's fully operational as well. So I'll yeah, jump in before you take that next question. So the other half of that question is you have registrations, but we'd be interested in a single service option. So our, our so OK, so this is a big thing here because there's a couple of different uh, types of uh, regis automated registrations that are floating around at the moment. Um, and, and I think people need to understand differences in, in, in you know, in, in what they're buying. Um, if you are with, with a provider, that is using a third party bot to log into your practice uh, to try to copy your registrations with a third party robot. Um, that is going to be challenging long term to support because the more people that they work with, the more the more people they will need to support and the more changes they will need to take into consideration. OK, just something to think about. Um, MyBot GP for patient registrations and we're saying this from experience because we've automated this the old way we we've automated up to 20 different processes the old way and we stopped doing it because we believe that it's difficult to support my bot gp um it has been built in a way where it could where where we download uh pre uh download a my bot gp to your desktop uh, or it's hosted um, and then you make the decisions around what you want to do 
So there's no third party robot and there's no copying and it's much easier to support. So coming back to what you were saying before, um, we um, run the NHS website. We've automated uh, registrations multiple times. Our MyBot GP for registrations should be live in the next six, six weeks or so. That will be a email download and then it will take everything directly from the website and it will simply and it will it will uh, obviously replicate that and register patients into your system um, and it will be considerably cheaper than the price of the than some than what we're hearing about other other uh, companies quoting because it's much more of a binary decision it's you know it's, it's not a particularly complex one so we're very happy to talk to people about that uh, and show them what show them what that will look like um so is a question here around uh you mentioned it still sends a reminder to the clinician after filing what form does this take no what i was saying was that in emis uh we were asked to leave a sans do you want to answer that one yeah sure so so basically it doesn't archive so it will it will perform the actual normal pathology filing um apply your rules um and then leave it there and then it can be archived manually. So again, you can cast your eye over it um, and just simply archive manually. Um, so that, that's left in there for, for a purpose. And, and we were asked to, um, sorry, Nick, and we were asked to, to, to build it that way through our steering groups. So the, the, the first iteration was to, was to simply action it. And the feedback we got is that lots of people like to review that as, you know, for the reasons that we touched on before. Um, is there a deadline for the six week free trial, which we need to request? No, no, there isn't um that that that's fine and the trial is applicable to both emis and system one uh, does the price increase uh these additional areas are added on yes um well, in, it only increases if you're if you're buying multiple multiple products but they're all sold individually so you could only have normal pathology filing or you may just have registrations or you may have registrations repeat prescriptions and and something else each one will be an additional price uh, and this may be one for Sanj to cover based on setting up the parameters. Yeah, okay. so, so the way the bit D works is you've got two uh, functions. One, you've got the normal range. So again, 50 to whatever it is, 150, 350. So that will drive your normal range. Uh, you've also got the ability to do for the insufficiency range. So you can put a separate um, range in, which is again, you know, 25 to 50, et cetera. So in both instances, you can send a text to the patient. Um, so yeah. But, but again, it, not to the internal practice. That is an outgoing accurate text to the actual patient, which whereby my, my body GP is deemed whether you're insufficient or normal and will text accordingly. So, so the way that we've built this um, is it can be easily updated as well. So over a period of time. So all of our clients are are, continue, are sending feedback and potential additions and changes that, that, that um, you know, could be used to improve it further down the line. Um, and we're able to do that. We keep a track list of, of potential additions, and then over time we can simply release a patch update, um, you know, and it will update everything with additional functionality. An example of that is when we first went live with this product, our clients um, did not have the ability to review abnormal test lab test results. Who only looked at normal test results, and some of the sites came back and said, "Well, actually." You know, we believe that these ranges are correct and our lab always gives them at this range and classes them as abnormal. Um, and we want to be able to review normals and abnormals. So we, we built a patch, you know, much as your your mobile phone when it says, you know, do you want, do you want to press an up, a button to update, uh, pressed update and added that functionality in as well. So there's going to be additional logic with, you know, uh, adding in hands and ors and, and stuff like that into the into the functionality too over a period of time. Um, any other questions? I saw a hand up earlier on before. Uh, yeah, we've got users to speak to. We've got some some references we can share. Um, 100%. Uh, that's not not a problem at all. Ah, Shaheen, I think it was. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I did put a hand up, but it's a question that I missed because my GP walked in as I was listening. Um, TPP question. I what was the answer to that one? Because they are lo launching their own um, automation pathology, and I was interested to know um, the differences between this system and maybe what System One are doing. Yeah, so S System One, as far as we understand it, are having some uh, are are being uh, are providing the ability to do some additional checks 
for pathology, some quite basic ones. Um, whereas my bot GP has is is able to read every line, every test, and then you've got the ability to to um, I don't like describing it this way, but it is it is a use of words to dice and splice the logic, the five or six pieces of logic, age, gender, ranges, uh, reading the pathology, the full pathology report, going back into the patient record, um, uh, looking for keywords, absence of keywords. So it's much more comprehensive. So it will be a, a bigger tranche of bloods you can apply those rules to. Um, and that's not saying that some of that functionality might might be still quite useful and it could incorporate you know when they do that we may incorporate some of that so it could you know grab a whole bundle and then add those and, and, and push it all the way through um as we understand it there's is is it's it's more around you know looking for quite basic checks because i think where a lot of the system providers need to draw a line is they're not in a position they're not there to start to make medical decisions for you uh, they're there to provide you with the information um in a in a in the correct way so that you can make those decisions um it's a bit like um emis um uh, built um uh, eps sign off for repeat prescriptions it works and it's really good um but you still need a person to apply all of the logic beforehand to tell you to, to push it into eps to see what scripts you want to sign off so they tend to hover around that side provide you with all the information um and then action decisions that you've made what my bot gp is about and what we do is we is is we help you replicate your logic so we can go we can go much further okay. just i'll just i'll just add on that as well and the actual reporting piece of it as well so <clears throat> we're building I mean, there's an analytics page uh, within my bot which gives you a, a breakdown level at a blood test category so again you can pull off so if it's running on a daily basis every two three hours um you know once it's run you can then see at uh, you know how many blood test categories were filed how many were skipped etc and that kind of data is really important because then at blood test category level you can see what you are processing more of or less than and then you can start to take preventative action against that so the reporting piece is a completely game changer with tpp as james said it's basic overlay not able to file providing you with the information where the automation kicks in actually is clicking that filing button actually sort of actually the logic Okay. Can I ask termination then and or contract length? One year, one year rolling yeah. contract. Okay. And how much notice for termination? Mm, as long as we're told, I think it's uh, well, it's a, a yearly contract, so it will okay. it will expire at the end of the year. Okay. Thank you. Our pleasure. And so, do we have it? So that the registrations piece has become really prominent actually recently, uh, and we've 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 been asked a lot about that. What I would say to anyone who's thinking about registrations is just bear with us a little bit to get this to get this product live. We've automated registrations already multiple ways the old way, um, but we, we're building this. MyBot GP will be live. As I said before, four to six weeks, hopefully, maybe a little bit longer. Um, it's going to be cheap and it's going to be good and it will be very easy to use. So just bear with us. It's a, if you think of levels of complexity from a bill perspective, you know, whilst it's everything that, that is done in, in the NHS and primary care or the acute space or, or community community pharmacy, wherever, uh, needs to be fully audited and is and is complex and the way it interacts with everything has to be done in a particular way. It's quite a binary, it's quite a binary um, a decision tree when comparing it to something like normal or abnormal pathology filing or repeat prescriptions or Dockman. Um, so, so this is going to, we, we're going to come live with this soon. We, you know, we, 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 we still have yet to price it. Um, but from the prices that we're hearing that 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 people are paying for this at the moment, you know, in the regions of, you know, almost a pound, fifty pounds, seventy two pounds, all that that type of stuff is going to be considerably less than that, uh, especially for clients that, that are with us at the moment with another product. So the way our vision for the MyBot GP range is they're going to be used as your little helpers. So you'll you'll so hopefully everyone will have a MyBot GP living at the practice, um, and you'll have a couple of things which you'll have it doing for you in the background. And you know, as I said before, it could be registering patients, and it could be repeat prescriptions, or it could be repeat prescriptions and normal pathology filing. Uh, we will have a webinar closer to the date where we can show uh, demonstrations of MyBot GP registering patients. But if you think of it um, in in its purest sense. All of the all of the uh, questions that are asked on the NHS site 
for patients uh, to find a GP uh, and register a patient. Um, we're picking them up from there. Um, we're an authorised user and then it will plug, it will, it will be sent straight to your practice. No data leaves your practice and the patients will be registered. Uh, and then we should be able to bolt into if you've got, I don't know, if patients registering through a website and, and stuff like that, that, that should be able to plug into it as well. Um, but it's going to be a very robust tool. And what I think people need to understand is the nature of why we of why we built the MyBot GP range. We're building it so you can change it. And that's really important. You know, if you want to automate something with a with a third party supplier, someone else, um, they can only copy what you do once. If you want to change that, you have to go back to them and then they have to copy that again. If you want to go back, they've got to copy that again. And that's problematic in your space because your stuff changes all the time and the decisions that you make around that change all the time. And that will impact the cost that you pay for it, how robust it is and how long it's up and running for. So. T touching back to people that have seen previous webinars last year from us, we were automating multiple pro multiple different processes from medication safety monitoring, referrals, pharma outcomes, blood diaries, recalls, um, triage, fit notes, normal bloods, abnormal bloods. We stopped all of that and we've gone back to and, and now we're, we're building very bespoke MyBot GP products. Um, that can be maintained and support. The key with MyBot GP is we email them to you. They're a five minute download. They come pre-configured and if you don't like the logic, no problem. You saw the drop down menus. You, you click on the drop down menu and you change it. If you go home in the evening and you're sitting down watching TV and you think, Do you know what? I'm not comfortable with that. I want to change it. We can just log back in and change it. You don't need to contact us. It's not going to cost you any additional money um, and, it, and you'll be able to use the tool all the time. If you set ranges and, and, and tests and stuff where you have to go back to the supplier to change them, um, you know, you won't be able to use the, the, the tool while you're waiting for them to make the changes. And if they're busy, they might not make them for two or three months. And, that, and we're very passionate about that. We did a blog on our website you'll see it somewhere around saying not all automation is the same. That's really important. You need to understand what you're buying. Uh, uh, free, free trials. Trial. Sorry, Sam, you're going to say. Yeah, no, I was just going to say if there's anyone that needs, um, you know, to understand the key differences to the RPA providers that are in the market for my GP, we'll happily give you the kind of, um, you know, the kind of key differences. Um, and as James said, it's all about time. You know, invariably a RPA project will take about six months uh, and you force you to standardize um, and, and not ability to change. So again, you know, MyBot GP has completely reverse engineered that whole piece, um, hence why we stopped doing it. It's not scalable. Um, RPA will not get off the ground um, because you simply can't facilitate 50, 60, 70 changes at PCN level um, and then start to roll that out nationally. It just does not work. Um, I've been doing this about 12 years, automation, so I've, I've done the RPA. As James said, we, we, we rolled it out to hundreds of practices and made an intentional decision to stop because RPA does not work uh, in the conventional form. Um, and happy to have a, a conversation with anyone who needs any more information on why RPA is just, just it's not able to, to scale. Um, thanks, Sanj. So with regards to uh, free trial, uh, Mihaela will have emailed you or us. Um, anyone, just, just come back to us. We can book that in. Um, uh, uh, Stephen's question. Yes, we can do that. And then I saw a hand pop up for someone, although I can't see whose hand that it's, is. Hi, James. It's Stephen. It was just to ask if I could have that key differentiator between yourself and other providers. Yeah, um, that would be yeah. really helpful for me at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Mish, can you take Stephen's name, please? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. We've 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 done a little thing. Coming back to Sanj, it's, it's just that it, it sort of think that when you're buying stuff like this, you've, you've almost got to think about the people that you're buying it from and what's their world like. So if their world is around having developers that specialize in copying what you do and support what you do, then it's all around how much capacity do they have and how to, to make changes and how quickly can they make changes. Um, and if they've got bundles of clients, they're not gonna be able to make changes very quickly and you won't be able to make the tool. So we have a big dev team here. Um, 
you know at, at, at Chiff Jeff. We're not we're not a new entity, um, and we've got a bundle of clients that are we're using that that methodology with, and it's fine. Um, but we stopped at that level because we can support them at that level. But we even so, with them, them, we're flipping them over to to to, yeah. to MyBot GP. The key fundamental difference with MyBot GP is it's not saying to everyone, yes, we can do everything. No, you can't do everything. What we can do is we've got some very specific products that are very quick to download that that you control and you can apply all of the logic and if things change there's no additional cost to make changes and you're not prevented from using them and it's and that's massive and, and we can share info on that yeah I was, I was just going to give an example um for example good recalls i think it's around 30 practices for, for a fed um a change was requested so again that was 37 changes for each of those practices that took about I think it was around sort of eight weeks. Um, so again, you have to man because because with RPA everything is hard coded. It can only work one way. So then every change on top of that is another change, which takes time, etc. I mean, we've done this for the last eight years. This is what we do. We are an RPA consultancy, so hence that's why we had to start because it's just not scalable. And with the difference with MyBot GP, the way that's been architected is if you want that change, for example, coming back to that 37 practices at a Fed level. A field changes in EMIS or System 1 or a new requirement pops up, uh, we're able to dispatch a change centrally um, and then that updates every single practice within, I think it's about sort of a couple of minutes. You log off, log back on, that change has been actioned and that's it. So, so again, that's again a massive key differentiator. Yeah, and, and, and thanks, Sanjay. And I can describe that another way. Um, another way is you've got five practices and you all don't want to do the same thing the same way. It's a challenge. So what are you going to do? You're going to have someone try to build five copies of one thing and then remember what they built for each one. And cost is is starts to become prohibitive. Uh, or do you just want your own copy and you can do what you want? And that's my bot GP. Going back to the example of of, of what I gave before in Sanjay's, exa Sanjay's example, you know, we could email 30 practices, 30 my bot GPs. And you can all configure them yourself or you could come to an agreed standardization we've got some feds we're, we're talking to and working with where they want to try to set an example logic for the fed okay but they're not but they're obviously because they can't not preventing individual practices if they're not comfortable with the logic that's being used to tweak theirs and tailor theirs how they want it done and also if you're covering a large area then yeah you're going to be presented with information in a different way so the ranges are going to be different so um and and, and that's that's really important but you know bringing it back to, to the webinar today the products that we have in scope and will be live within the next three months three to six months at the latest are all going to be branded my bot gp they will all be five minute downloads and you can change them all as much as you like and they will all have full audit logs and they and then what's available today is normal pathology filing document will be live soon workflow attaching letters and tpp registrations please if anyone is looking for that hold for that that's that that will be live very soon uh, and repeat prescriptions and abnormal pathology filing. We have a working template, but it's not ready to go live yet. It's still with our steering groups and test sites to see how far we can push the logic safely. Uh, and then we will business case that to see whether how how far we've got is something that adds value and you'd actually want to buy. And, and if there's a tick on every box, that will come live and with anything all you do is you would contact us and then we send you an email and my bot gp will be updated and you'll have an additional product additional product additional product a um, couple more things here uh, you want to email on the differences yet yeah, shaheen as well yeah we can send you those um, the differences there's also a blog on our site the most recent blog i think it's called not all um, not all automation is the same. That is about that. It's not going into any breakdown of names of suppliers or companies or, or anything like that. It's just talking about differences of approach. You know, by example, we used to build big automation houses for, for companies and they're great if you're happy to change all the time. Um, if you just want a product that does something and you want it working tomorrow and you want it to do what you want and then you want to change your mind about how it could work tomorrow or you don't want it working in the same way as, as, as someone else. Then, then, then it's my bot GP all day long. Uh, any other questions? We've got a couple of minutes left. So just in, 
But while we wait and see if there's any other questions coming in, if you are interested in a trial, please contact us. Um, we're very happy to provide six week pilots. Uh, it's really straightforward. We would literally, you come to an agreement, we send you an agreement and then we send you a link, book in the install date and it will be live within a couple of hours up and running in the background. It's no, you know, there's no, uh, you know, couple of months planning or anything like that. And we're very happy to do that. OK, so um, that looks like. No more questions. Great. So, yeah, Sandra, unless you've got anything else to add, we'll wrap things up for today. Cool. OK, well, thank you for everyone for attending. Nice to meet you all. Uh, thank you to Sanjeev and Mihaela for supporting. And any questions, please come back. We'll email you a link uh, to the webinar once it's up on our website um, and additional information and stuff and come back if you if you want to know any more.